What's up? Corey James here. You're gonna like this one. Today we're gonna dive into the pyramid power plant theory. A theory that suggests numerous ancient pyramids from around the world were actually used as a type of power plant. I know, sounds ridiculous, crazy, ludicrous even. How could a stone pyramid built thousands of years ago possibly produce energy? Well, that's what makes this theory so intriguing because unlike other accepted theories, this one is actually based on facts and science, not speculation. So, first things first, let's address the question most skeptics have in regards to the pyramids and that is, why can't they just be pyramids? Why does there have to be more than what the accepted theory tells us? Great question. Answer? It's that word theory. And unfortunately, many of those theories are purely speculation based on long-held beliefs which in turn leaves a shit ton of unanswered questions. Perfect example, the Great Pyramid of Giza. Easily our most iconic of the ancient pyramids and a structure that has no equal. Yet many people would be surprised to know that to this day, no one knows how they did it. According to archaeologist, Egyptologist, and every other ologist that has a PhD, the Great Pyramid was built as a tomb for the Pharaoh Khufu, and at the time of its construction, the ancient Egyptians had neither the wheel or the pulley system, and the greatest technology they possessed was copper. Yet, somehow they were able to construct a structure that even by today's standards would be nearly impossible to replicate. So how did they do it? Well, according to the smart people, they did it with wood, rope, ramps, copper, thousands of men, and the sheer fucking will. But here's the problem with that. No, it wasn't. Why? Very simple. Because there is not a single blueprint or written manuscript as to how the ancient Egyptians built the pyramids, everything we know in regards to said construction is 100% theory. And here's the kicker. That accepted theory cannot be fully explained by the experts that support it. The greatest mystery about the pyramids is not secret chambers. It's how the Egyptians managed to build them with the technology they had. According to the experts, to build the pyramids, the Egyptians began with a ramp. However, since a ramp can only make it so far, that's where the theory splits, into those who support the zigzag approach and those who support the spiral approach. But here's the kicker once again. Both ways encounter several issues that neither theory has an answer for, with the most glaring being, it takes 10 men to pull one ton, 15 on an incline. So, a stone that weighs 10 tons, which there were many of, would take a minimum of 150 men to pull. Double that for a 20 ton stone, which there were many of. So. First, how do you fit that many men on a freaking wooden ramp on the side of a pyramid? And second, how, uh, how you get around those corners? Next, we are told this massive structure is a tomb built for the Pharaoh Khufu, but here's the problem with that. No, it wasn't. Why? Very simple. Their primary objective was to ensure the safe passage of the Pharaoh from this life into the next. This was a major concern to Egyptians. When a pharaoh died, can we be sure the pharaoh is going to have a safe journey into the afterlife? All of the texts, all of the scenes in these tombs are designed to serve those simple functions. If that is the case, how do you explain the Great Pyramid? No prayers, none of the sacred artwork, not a single hieroglyph can be found within this so-called tomb. Now. I'm not even gonna try and speculate as to how this ancient structure was actually built. All I know is it wasn't built with just wood, rope, ramps, copper, thousands of men, and the sheer fucking will. And it wasn't built as a tomb. So let's look at another theory, the power plant theory. Why is it so popular? There's a shit ton of evidence to support it. And the Great Pyramid is just the beginning of a very intriguing connection. pyramid is like a cosmic engine. It is designed to transform the dead being beneath it into a living spirit. First, the interior of the Great Pyramid. Why red granite? Why would you travel 500 miles to somehow quarry 8,000 tons of one of Earth's hardest rock? Well, must have been important, possibly serves a particular function, because it's clearly not for decorative purposes. 
let's look at what makes this rock unique, the quartz crystal. Quartz crystal is used in just about every single piece of technology we use today. Why? Because quartz crystal has the unique ability to produce electricity when placed under mechanical stress, a process called piezoelectricity. But what sets quartz crystals apart is the accuracy at which it can be tuned to oscillate, then maintain that specific frequency with almost zero fluctuation. starting with the subterranean chamber. Believed to be an unused chamber, recent discoveries reveal stress fractures and water erosion. In addition with the shafts and evidence of a valve, some have suggested this is evidence of a hydraulic press, which would vibrate the pyramid in turn, vibrating the crystals. Moving up to the queen's chamber, more specifically, the mysterious shafts that connect to it. Recent discoveries reveal traces of zinc and hydrochloric acid. Now, you can take from that what you will, but the simple fact is that just shouldn't be. Why would two modern modern-day chemicals be found within the shafts of a 5,000-year-old pyramid. Well, this vessel represents the Queen's Chamber. Into the tubes, we're going to pour hydrated zinc and then hydrochloric acid. When you bring these two liquids together, and a chemical reaction occurs and a product of that chemical reaction is hydrogen. And you can see the vapor, the hydrogen, escaping through the chimney. And there you have the reaction. Finally, let's look at the Giza Plateau from above and the alignment of the three pyramids. It looks eerily similar to another ancient site located just north of modern-day Mexico City, Teotihuacan. Believed to date back to 600 BC, translated to the City of the Gods, this ancient site was inhabited by the Mayans, Aztec, and the Toltec people. However, who originally constructed this ancient site, when, and for what purpose remain a mystery to this day? Why? Great question. Answer. Teotihuacan, despite its size, has no hieroglyphs whatsoever. There are other cultures in Mesoamerica that were using writing systems. There's nothing like that at Teotihuacan. So we don't really have a clear history of what happened at Teotihuacan. And we can't really find evidence of their rulers. Which is why we can pretty much skip over the theory and problems part because when it comes to Teotihuacan, there are none. So let's jump right into the fun stuff. Starting with the first discovery made back in 1983 when archaeologists discovered a mysterious chamber of mica under the Pyramid of the Sun. Now, these chambers extended under the complex to other structures. However, further excavation was prevented by the local government and access to these chambers is currently prohibited by that same government. Next, a discovery made back in October of 2003 when a massive rainstorm left a sinkhole at the foot of the Temple of the Serpent. Upon excavation by archaeologists, they uncovered five chambers, two at the top and three at the bottom, where they found dozens of artifacts, including mysterious jade statues and a room filled with golden spheres. Later, in 2015, one of the most unexpected and unexplainable discoveries was made directly under the center of the temple where a pool of liquid mercury, a highly toxic substance, was found. Now, a few things make this interesting. First, how and why would liquid mercury be at the bottom of a 2,000-year-old structure? Second, liquid mercury does not naturally form. It is actually extracted from cinnabar, then subjected to a very complex process that ancient people could not possibly no, because it involves extreme high temperatures that ancient people could not possibly accomplish, which is fascinating because this is not the only ancient site where we find liquid mercury, and it just so happens that this other ancient site, it's a pyramid as well. Located in the Shangxi Province, China, is the tomb of the first emperor, Xin Shi Wang. Built around 200 BC, this massive pyramid is also the location of the famous terracotta warriors. Thousands of clay statues, each one unique from the other, representing the emperor's army. However, further excavation has been deemed unsafe due to the high levels of mercury detected within the tomb itself. 
I understand the fantastic nature of this theory, however at this point, it seems to be the only one that makes sense as it is the only one that can adequately explain these mysteries, starting with the Mercury. Never mind the fact that it absolutely should not exist under a 2000 year old pyramid, today this rare substance is referred to as a superconductor used in many highly advanced technologies. Moving on to the mica, another material that makes no sense in an ancient complex simply because why? This is a very hard rock related to the granite family and just like the interior of the Great Pyramid you have to ask yourself the question, why go through so much trouble when plenty of other softer rock was available? Answer: Because it was important, because it served a purpose. What purpose you may ask? Today we use mica in some of our most advanced technology as it is a great insulator of electricity. In addition, mica is also used on the space shuttle as a heat shield as it is able to withstand temperatures and excess of 3,000 degrees. Combine these elements with those discovered at the Great Pyramid and you have all the makings of a power generator. And even more than that, a type of power grid. And as to what that would have powered, that part is purely speculation. And I'll leave it up to you. Now again, I know this is a crazy theory, but again, at this point, you have to seriously ask yourself, could it be possible or is this all really just coincidence? How's it going everybody? Corey James here. Just wanted to say thank you for checking out the video. I very much hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, do the little guy a favor. Hit the buttons, the like, the subscribe. If you're feeling a little frisky, hit that notification bell. Leave me some comments, suggestions on future videos. Do it all. Once again, thank you and I'll see you on the next one.